first speaker is going to be Leslie Snodowski, and she wants to talk about uh, the Upper Pentalba, followed by Bobby Fraze. Frazier. Leslie's up front. Thank you very much. Oh, is it on? Yes, okay, it I'm is. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, my name is Leslie Snodowski, and I've lived at the Upper Pentaba Building for 16 years. I'm here today to request a meeting with Mayor Landrieu to go over the shocking initiatives your appointees to the Upper Pentaba Building Restoration Corporation are implementing. Our up to 70% increased rents are supposed to go towards renovations, yet management has consistently refused to tell tenants of their renovation plans. We believe that more than half of the tenants won't see any improvements in the next two-year lease cycle, even though we're being asked to pay for those improvements now. On June 16th, your appointees voted to renovate vacant apartments first. As a full-time tenant, I've paid more than $269,000 in rent to the city of New Orleans and will now be subsidizing renovations for new tenants before my home gets the much needed repairs I requested for years. Your appointees have also refused to um, consider additional appraisals that illustrate they're raising our rents up to $1,700 more a month than comparable properties in the area, even though our apartments have no parking, no security, no elevators, and recurring leaks, rotting floorboards, and insufficient water heaters and central air and heat units. The tenants believe your appointees are developing policies that are discriminatory towards full-time French Quarter tenants and senior citizens living at the Upper Pentaba, some who have already been forced out by the rent increases. The tenants have recently discovered that upon signing new leases, we have to sign a rider stating we will agree to a policy and procedure manual that will not be distributed to the tenants until after we sign these leases. In that manual, tenants of the Upper Pentaba will now have to ask for your appointee's permission seconds. before we invite guests to stay over in our homes. Tenants who walk up 74 steps to get to their homes will no longer get to leave their bikes and baby carriages in the downtown common areas, excuse me, downstairs common areas. And tenants are also being told we need to keep our apartments at a certain temperature or face eviction. The director of the French Market Corporation is also allowing subcontractors to take copies of our keys home with them at night, further illustrating your appointees are not looking out for the tenants' welfare. On August, please bring your comments to a close, please. Of course. Um, just one second. Let me just see. Um, oh, um, when the appointees voted to uphold new rent increases, the square footages were inconsistent with the 2009 appraisals. Some apartments have grown by more than 280 square feet. So we're just asking for you, Mr. Mayor, to please take a meeting, or one of your department heads to take a meeting with, one, with the Tenants Association to please explore these issues before signing of new leases. We really want to see what the renovations are going to be. Thank you for your comments. And and, um, about the policy manual. Thank you, sir. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you, everyone. Um, Bobby is going to be followed by Lisa Suarez. Yeah. Hi. Hi, my name is Bobby Fruge. I live at 333 Exchange Place. What I'm concerned about is the hustling on the streets. I've been down here for 25 years, and it's the same people that's hustling us, the tourists, every day. They get caught. I don't know what the problem is. But if you walk out this door tonight and you go to Bourbon Street, you'll get hustled out there. Concern is, why don't the city of New Orleans own a tow truck that could tow a dual wheel truck? I had a truck sitting in a dual wheel truck. That's four tires in the back end of it. Because a truck was sitting in a, a loading zone for three days and they could not un move the truck. As far as the lighting goes, I think they're doing a very good job on the lighting. I would like to present something to Mr. Crispin Palmer, if I can, can pertaining to Exchange Alley, that she helped us take care of. If you would give it to the mayor or whoever you want to see. We, we appreciate your help. And we would just like to get everything. The, the main concern is the, crime, the hustling that's going on in the street. I figure the police department is doing a great job. But in the 100 block of Bourbon Street, it's a nightmare. And you can all walk out and you'll get hustled over. <laughs> Thank you. Thank That's you for I your comments. Thank you. Uh, Lisa is going to be followed by this person signed only Smith. And Smith wanted to talk about uh, communication, I think. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Mayor, Council staff. Um, I'm advocating a citizen's participation program, something I've worked on from before Katrina and uh, 
is uh, stated in the master plan, uh, which the whole city voted on. Uh, systemic and sustainable beyond your time in office. I want to make a case that the citizen participation plan is more a systemic reform than the neighborhood engagement office. While the neighborhood engagement office is a step in the right direction, it is not a systemic reform. The office can be reversed by the mayor simply by leaving it out of the budget. A CPP is a systemic reform that would be important and lasting legacy of this administration. For the longest time, community engagement is done on an ad hoc basis and requires people to participate when and on what the city wants. We need to make the case that the CPP is always active, not ad hoc, is proactive and not reactive, and focuses on the neighborhood's priorities, not the city's priorities. To be a best practice, the city's community engagement needs to be an ongoing and proactive. It has to be driven by the community and not the city, where the city comes to the community and not vice versa. This is what has been proposed with a strong PP, which is not the Neighborhood Engagement Office. I want to relate a personal, a personal experience after many years of um, engagement with my neighborhood association and having been president of my neighborhood, the Faubourg Marigny, the year before Katrina. Um, I was engaged before and since. Recently, the Marigny has advocated for protecting neighbors from a certain uh, harmful development practices. The council member insisted on taking the ordinance to council before the final language had been approved by the neighbors and the association because seconds. she needed to get it off her agenda. Seconds. I feel bullied and ambushed and abused. Where do, you, where do I go now? This is an issue in which the two previous council members tenaciously protected me and my neighbors, making compromises that cannot be enforced, um, does not... It inspires me to give up. I mean, I've been trying to protect a p specific situation for 17 years. Jackie backed me all the way, and now I'm, I'm ambushed the night before it goes to council, and I'm very upset about it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Smith is going to be followed. Smith, you wanted to talk about capital projects. Um, you didn't sign a first name, so, so I guess we missed Smith. Uh, David Pelter. I supplied a list of questions, so I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Um, you have two minutes. <laughs> so let me start with, I own a shop in the French Quarter. I also live in Bywater. Um, in the French Quarter, we have some deplorable sidewalks that uh, people cannot take a wheelchair down them because they're in such bad shape. Uh, yet we have cutouts in the sidewalk so allows uh, wheelchairs to come up. If something can be done about this and if something can be done about people parking on the sidewalks, my shop is directly across the street from the Old Mint. People park there constantly and the sidewalk is a mess. Um, another thing is I like free enterprise. I have a business. I pay sales tax on every single item I sell. Yet I see people on the streets selling wares with no sales tax being collected. I have no problem with them selling these wares. I think they should have occupational license, and I think they should be able to sell, but I think they should be remitting some sales tax to the city. Another item I brought up was the uh, markings in the streets uh, to designate where you can and cannot park. Uh, like next to a corner, you have to be 20 feet away from a crosswalk, or you will get a $40 ticket. No one knows this except the people who give you the tickets. I've taken it upon myself to paint a yellow line at one intersection. People still don't see it because the signage indicates you can park there, which you can't. Oh, what are the seconds? Um, graffiti is another thing that I'm adamantly opposed to. If the, um, if the city could do something about helping the property owners maintain their buildings and stop this blight on our city, it would be great help. God, where else can I go? I had a list. <laughs> I went on and on. Um, the other thing, no parking on Decatur Street. From Decatur, from, from Esplanade Avenue to, to, uh, to Canal Street during rush hour traffic. This does not work. There is never two lanes of clear traffic on Decatur Street to close, for sir. The, that two hour period. It just doesn't work. It hasn't worked for 20 years. Remove those signs, let people walk there, and at least one day let that street be cleaned by street, walk, uh, street cleaners. <laughs> Thank you kindly for your cooperation. Um, Joe Friend followed by Julian Mutter. Joe Friend. I'm just going to second the comments 
about this citizen participation project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Friend. Uh, Julian Mutter, followed by Michelle Kimball. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, and staff. Thank you very much for having us and hosting us this morning. Uh, as a citizen who wears many hats, business and private, I'm here this evening wearing just two of them. In fact, technically, one of them is a helmet. And I'm here to uh, ask that the city, uh, to point out some facts really quickly, uh, pre-Katrina, uh, New Orleans had zero bike lanes. We now have 40 miles of bike lanes. I want to see that continue to grow. And right now, according to the United States Census, 2010 Census, New Orleans is ranked number six for bicycle, bicycling commuting in the United States of America. We would like New Orleans to be number one. So please, Mr. Mayor, please give us a Department of Public Works director who will embrace streets for everyone. Number two, I'm here as a uh, representing, as a board member of the uh, New Orleans Food Co-op. We're very close to opening. Uh, we have most of the funding we need. We have requested a fresh farm retail initiative funding. And I ask you, on, on, as a neighbor of, seconds. of the Marigny, and for all the neighborhoods that are in the uh, Healing Center and the New Orleans Food Co-op, the Marigny, the New Marigny, Bywater, St. Rock, Treme, et cetera, Please help us in, get, in funding the co-op through the Fresh Food Retail Initiative. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Michelle Kimball, followed by John Messenger. Hi, Michelle Kimball with the Preservation Resource Center. I'm so encouraged to hear that we've moved 1,000 properties through the sheriff's sale process. I was told by a leader in um, issues dealing with blight at the national level that from a policy standpoint New Orleans is far ahead of the curve in comparison to most other communities so that is certainly something we can be very proud of. I'm really encouraged to hear that we are front-loading the process, that we're getting more uh, people with code enforcement on the streets, that we're working with volunteer attorneys on moving these properties through the process. But let's not forget about the backside of it as well. Our City Planning Commission, our Vue Carre Commission, HDLC, Safety and Permits, all of those entities need to be fully staffed and fully funded so that they can process applications as people are getting these houses back in to commerce and so that they are not frustrated. Also, there needs to be consistency in the message with bringing these uh, properties back. People are being told that they must elevate their properties. I understand I've been engaged in trying to fix the uh, problems with the guidelines for elevating properties and I'm in, thrilled to continue to do that. But let's get it fixed and let's get these properties back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, John will be followed by Kate Coons. Thank you. Hi, my name is John Messenger and I'm representing both Bywater and the St. Claude neighborhood. We have some wonderful things going on with Nord C and with capital projects with the Stallings project and $500,000 available in private money from Markey Park. However, we're effectively locked out of our parks because ordinances aren't being enforced, ordinances that are on the books particularly off-leash dogs. Um, I'd like to see, our parks would improve greatly if those ordinances would be enforced. City Council has pledged to look at the ordinances and if they're not effective, to write them so that they are. Nord C is calling for their enforcement, so we are too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kate is gonna be followed by Mary Lacoste, and we, I think we met your 7.30 time limit. Hi, I'm Kate Coons, and I live in the Bywater area. And my problem is with the, um, the the big trucks coming down Poland Avenue. The area is zoned for commercial, but not industrial. I'd like to see a rezoning of that. And in addition, um, we have have heard a lot of things about the the neighborhood wanting the Norfolk and Southern Railroad to come all the way down to, from Ursuline down to 
Poland Avenue. I'd like to see that happen. Okay, that's my good. Thank you. Um, Mary Lacoste will be followed by Ben Harwood. Hi, I'm here to talk about the holes in the sidewalks in the French Quarter. I'm a walking tour guide and I'm forever having to caution people as I say, look at that beauty of that ironwork, but look at your feet. Some of these holes are eight to 12 inches wide and almost a foot deep. Not all of them are just where they used to have uh, water meters. These are holes and I know somebody's responsible for them, but we need a quick fix. We need someone to come around with a wheelbarrow full of maybe gravel and fill them up temporarily till we find out who's really responsible. Otherwise, we're breaking ankles because so many people come to the French Quarter wearing thongs. Oops, I mean, they call them flip-flops today. <laughs> Either way, they... It could be a little hazardous either way. <laughs> but I think it would not take a great deal of expense to have them inspected and filled, just temporarily. I'm particularly worried about the ones on St. Louis Street between Bourbon and Dauphine, and on Conti between Bur Bourbon and Flantine, Conti. But um, with this rain, when you had puddles there, particularly people were sloshing through them. Shh, that is really an ugly sight. Well, we so we have to be very careful calls. with those kind of things. And I know the city is very interested in the safety of its pedestrians, of its tourists, and the safety of its tour guides. But that's another issue I'll address another time. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, as a courtesy, we have a number. <laughs> Just as a, Ms. Mary, thank you so much. And Joe. Seven community meetings, we've got lots of people that want to talk. Two people tonight have spoken already in other community meetings. So I'm asking those of you as a courtesy, I went to other community meetings and had the opportunity to speak already, but I've answered your questions. If you'd like to come after and speak again, I'd do that, but if you would just leave it open for people that haven't had a chance to participate, to me that would be more courteous, and I would appreciate it if y'all would abide by that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, ben Harwood will be followed by Augusta. Butler. Uh, hi, my name is Ben Harwood. I'm a resident at 1522 Ursulines in the Treme. Um, also with uh, People United for Armstrong Park. Uh, we note uh, gratefully with all the repairs that are happening in Armstrong Park. Thank you. I hope they get finished. Uh, we also noticed that there are uh, billions of dollars being spent on the Iberville redevelopment and the medical center and the Rampart Streetcar and the I-10 decommissioning study and on and on and on around Armstrong Park. And we'd like to see the level of, of resources dedicated to Armstrong Park increased a lot. Uh, we're happy to, to see that the Lafitte Greenway is coming through and hopefully we'll have its trailhead in Armstrong Park. Hopefully we all can work together on that. Um, I guess my main concern is that there's an increased and sustained level of, of community engagement around Armstrong Park. Uh, there was already a UNOT process that uh, recommended four things for Armstrong Park to remove the uh, perimeter fencing, to rehabilitate all the buildings inside, including the municipal auditorium, to redesign the gardens and the grounds to make them safer, and to reconfigure the perimeter streets to, to encourage more uh, transaction inter interaction between Iberville and Tremaine neighborhoods and Lafitte. Um, and pretty much none of those have been done, and that process you know, involved 50, more than 50 community meetings, and more than a thousand residents and community groups and business owners. And I, I'd just like to see, you know, beyond these meetings, and these are great, um, that there are sustained resident and organizational um, input in these processes. Uh, we, we note with approval the, the Lafitte, the Lafitte uh, Corridor Steering Advisory Committee that involves citizen participants on an ongoing basis to provide recommendations to council uh, on, on that project, and we'd like to see that kind of mechanism be involved with the Armstrong Park and other projects so citizens can continue their input, uh, and thanks. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Augusta Butler is going to be followed by Rachel Reisman, or Risman. I'm Augusta Butler, and I live 1518 Poland, but before I tell you my problem, I want to give a great thanks to Capital Project for the work they've done with the Stalin Center on St. Claude Street. They have really worked faithfully in doing the work. 
that they needed to do with John and the organization. Secondly, I live on Poland between Claiborne and Robinson Street. I came here for, to meet with the man or the person in charge of public works. They have had six accidents in one month between Poland and Claiborne and between Robinson and Poland Street. I'm asking for a traffic light there, an enforcement light really, a camera, um, to slow down that traffic in that area. Um, it's unbelievable the way the cars c come through there. I want to acknowledge the 5th District Police Department for the work they've done in that area, slowing down the drivers there, and I noticed they write several tickets because of that, but they help a great deal. But the main thing is that a really big ask plea that we get a camera light up there because one night when I get out, come out my house, someone's going to be dead there. And it's been really fortunate that even a baby, I have several pictures of several accidents that have occurred there. And uh, two weeks ago, a baby was in one of the accidents. 30 seconds. And uh, so I'm hoping that maybe I can meet with the public works person and we can kind of work through this area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rachel is going to be followed by Deborah Cotton. Hi, my name is Rachel Reisman. I'm the president of the New Orleans Food Co-op Volunteer Board. I'm here tonight on behalf of our 1,700 members. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Lori Bird. She's our general manager. We conducted a local and nationwide search for her. She has over 10 years of co-op experience, and she's been doing a great job. Um, with her work, the work of our newly hired um, other employees and many volunteers, we're going to be open by the end of the month. So Lori has some other information she'd like to speak with you about. Great. Thank you all for taking the time to uh, listen to our uh, request. Um, first of all, I'd like to commend you, um, Mayor Landry, for your support of the Fresh Food Retailers Initiative and for all of the work and time and effort that you put into uh, getting that off the ground and getting that started. And I'd also like to thank uh, Councilwoman Palmer for her support, her continual support of both the Food Co-op and our work to get this funding um, and the Fresh Food Retailers Initiative as well. Um, I'd like to take a, sh a moment, um, Rachel just brought up a packet from us, um, which is our application for the Fresh Food Retailers Initiative funding. Um, and we have been working through the process and we're asking for um, support from our local elected officials in helping us um, gain this um, funding for the co-op. Um, we have a startup budget of $1.82 million and we've raised $1.54 million thus far. And we are committed to getting the store open, um, like Rachel said, at the end of this month. But we are asking for a forgivable zero interest loan for Fresh Food Retailers Initiative of $360,000. 30 is, seconds. Uh oh. Okay. Basically, um, to cut to the chase, <laughs> we are, you know, we're requesting this funding. I would like to ask you, um, Mr. Mayor, to look at both the um, funding tab and then also the tab that is labeled Program Needs for Funding, which is highlighted with the yellow sticky note. Um, we are looking for funding for the zero interest loan. Sorry about that. Um, we need, what's that? I got it. You got it? Great. Would you please look at that for us? We would greatly appreciate it and your support in helping make this happen. Um, there are a few hurdles that we've been working to get through. So. Can do that in five seconds. $330,000 Thank you very much. Uh, Deborah Cotton is going to be followed by uh, Catherine, and I think Catherine at 1240 Royal Street. I couldn't tell if this is Hill or Hugh or something oh, yeah. else. Uh -huh. what is it? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hello, Mayor Landrieu. Um, so I have uh, three issues. Um, one, and I'll um, go from sort of mundane to uh, what I think is the most important. Um, I'd really like it if we could get a sort of an easy to find landing page on the city's website for all of the budget information. It's, uh, the website is much better than it was, um, but it could be improved, especially in this area. Um, and I'd be happy to share um, more um, details about that with your tech person, but um, that'd be very helpful um, from a citizen participation perspective with regards to budgeting. Second, um, I'm a resident of Treme, 
and I'm not really sure how um, the parks, uh, uh, Nord prioritized rehabilitation of the parks, but um, we have yet to get the, um, the pool fixed. Um, it was a mess before Katrina. As you know, we have um, high-risk youth in our area, a lot of crime. Um, our first district does a fantastic job, um, but still we really need as many programs, as many opportunities to plug kids in. And if we could move the Treme Center up in the priority list, that would be awesome. Um, and then lastly, um, I've been to all of the budget meetings uh, to date, and I see that infrastructure is a huge issue with people. And But when we look at the budget uh, priorities for 2011, um, the largest uh, allocation is 58% uh, for public safety. And while we all know that public safety is very important, I would just ask that the city revisit um, how we look at public safety because um, ch children and families is at 3% and economic development is at 2%. And if we could think of um, more creative ways of how to pare down the public safety budget as it is um, sort of defined now and reallocate dollars to those programs that also it contributes ultimately to public safety so I would really like to see the city revisiting that thank you thank you <laughs> Catherine is going to be followed by Vincent Marcello mr. mayor council people and um, the administration thank you all for for uh, being here tonight. And really what I want to say are two things, uh, kind of simple. Um, wonder when we're going to have street signs put back in the French Quarter. I mean, I work out in my front yard a lot and people go, what street is this? And I'm on Royal Street. And then second of all, to second what other people have said about the sidewalks. They're really in deplorable condition. And we really are, you know, open to people really, really hurting themselves. And I think the quick fix is a good thing. And um, if we could do that, we'll be in great shape. Thanks. Thank you. Vincent is going to be followed by Jeremy with the French Quarter Business Association. Yeah, Vincent Marcello at 508 Barracks. The uh, French Quarter resident, residents have a lot of issues to deal with. Um, crime, broken sidewalks, uh, noise, graffiti, and uh, the sanitation problems. Uh, we feel that the... 8th District has been doing a very good job responding to residents' needs. Uh, I'd like to focus on the sanitation problems. The uh, post-Katrina, the French Quarter had a, a level of service that, that I would rate as very high. The, the French Quarter was, was clean and it actually smelled very, very good. Uh, that, le that level of service is diminished and we'd like to see that, that level return. Jeremy is going to be followed by Leo Watermeyer. Thank you very much. I have, was it something I said? Do I look funny? Okay. In regards to a request from the Regional Planning Commission, the city was asked to match a million dollars to gain six million dollars in street repairs in the French Quarter. To my knowledge, that has yet to be done, and we are asking that in the budget for next year, that million dollars is allocated to get six million dollars in street repairs in the French Quarter. My second point is about enforcement in the French Quarter. There are ordinances on the books about sanitation, when and where you can put garbage cans, et cetera, et cetera. There are ordinances on the book, books about property owners being responsible for repairing sidewalks in front of their property. There are ordinances on the books already about noise levels. And there are ordinances on the books about parking. One of those four is enforced, parking. The other three are not. We need your help. Thank you. Uh, Leo Watermeyer will be followed by John O'Brien. Um, I live at, on North Rampart Street across from Armstrong Park, and the biggest blighted building in our neighborhood is the city-owned municipal auditorium. This morning I took an editor of the Houston Chronicle on a tour of the park, and I could not conv give her any reasonable explanation why six years after Katrina, the municipal auditorium is still sitting there 
untouched. So one of my questions is, what do you have, what are the, what's the status of the renovations to the auditorium? And I think it's highlighted by the recent murder that occurred. You know, blighted buildings attract crime, and that's exactly what happened. The lady was either murdered on the side of the auditorium or her body was dumped on the side of the auditorium. So, you know, we, we welcome the work that's going on in the auditorium, in the uh, park itself, but the auditorium is still a big problem and just seems to be in limbo. And of course, we support re restoring and returning it to its original use. And we understand there's FEMA money available for that. We like to see the work going on in the park. We're sort of saying, please don't do any kind of official opening ceremony at the park until some kind of management plan is developed for the park and some kind of security plan because you just, we just don't want to see the gates open like pre-Katrina because it's just inviting trouble. We need more security. We need a management plan for the park. We'd like to see, we don't know who to deal with in the administration with the park. Who's the liaison? Could you appoint a liaison for us with the park? We've actually been trying to schedule a meeting, and that's, that seems to be impossible. I came here hoping to see this Emily Strong, I believe, your appointment secretary. I don't think she's here because we've been trying to get a meeting to discuss the park. So if we could at least get a liaison that in someone high up in your administration that, that the park comes under that we can be working with, I think that would, that would help us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John will be followed by Bob Sims. Hello, I'm John O'Brien, um, representing, uh, I have investments at 400 Bourbon, 1,000 Royal, and 500 uh, Domain, and I'm going to be talking, uh, the question is on the budget, um, the city is responsible for repairing again the public right-of-way of the corners of the sidewalks in the French Quarter, and I'd like to make sure that there's some dollars available to repair those corners. As everyone has said, the sidewalks are in deplorable shape. The city is responsible for those corners. You have some corners that have no sidewalk left, and it's a two, a one, you know, six-inch drop-off right into the into the street. And as uh, Jeremy uh, stated, as a property owner, we're responsible for the sidewalks in front of our buildings to be repaired. The city needs to enforce those ordinances so that we repair those sidewalks so the six million people that provide enormous amount of benefit to the city by coming into this town as tourists are, are, have, are safe and don't break ankles and fall onto the sidewalks. Thank you. Bob Sims followed by C. Hall. Yeah, I'm Bob Sims. I'm a resident of the 600 block of Dumaine, and you can probably tell by my accent, I uh, wasn't born here, but I've lived in the New Orleans area for the last 32 years and in the quarter since Katrina. So I want to pick up on the, on the infrastructure issues that many people have raised here. As you know, the, the, the quarter is a huge generator of, uh, of revenue for the city. When you take a small portion of that and reinvest it every year into improvements in the city, into the quarter, fix the sidewalks, fix the lights, fix the streets, all those things that the people have said today, and do it ongoing. Don't let neglect it for years like it has been, and do it every year, take a small portion, and, and use that for, for fixing the, the quarter up. Um, second comment, I guess, is uh, you, people mentioned about the, uh, the enforcement. Um, well, I think since Commander Walls came on board, uh, certainly trying to make a, a dent in, 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 in some of those things, but we need way more enforcement. I don't want to fix my sidewalk and then have somebody park on top of it and break it. And, uh, you know, that's part of the problem why a lot of people won't fix the sidewalks. So we need to enforce things. Um, we need to, uh, you know, as the previous guy said, we need to, um, the, the ordinances are on the books. We need to, we need to enforce them and, and enforce, enforce them fairly. Um, and that's, uh, I think that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Sea um, Hall followed by Kerry Foley Kessler. Sea Hall on um, Peters, St. Peter Street. Okay, we'll move over to Carrie Foley Kessler. Hi, I live in the 900 block of St. Peter Street, and I want to compliment everybody for all their hard work because y'all inherited a cluster bomb, and that's a polite way of saying it. So thanks for all your hard work. Um, Kristen, uh, please continue to push for the complete streets. Um, it's important infrastructure, like so many people have said, huge. Down here, we are... In this neighborhood, uh, as y'all said, generates a lot of the income, but also has to deal with a lot of the headaches. 
So if you can please help us with investing in infrastructure, y'all can see that on the sidewalks on Royal Street and some other places, the last time that they put those lovely shiny plaques was 1984 under Dutch Morial that they did a street you know, sidewalk repair thing. So please consider that. And then the last thing is parking enforcement. Um, there was supposedly something under the previous public works uh, director with regard to a parking survey. If someone can really continue to look at that and then analyze it and do something about it, whether it be pushing for a jitney that gets, encourages people to park outside of the quarter and then leave parking for the people that actually live in the neighborhood and or that are the businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sue Klein followed by Shelley Wagaspack. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and city workers. Um, I do know you've inherited a lot of problems and I really appreciate city workers. Y'all have a really thankless job most of the time and we do come to you with all our problems. Um, and anyway, one of the things I wanna comment on is quality of life enforcement. We have some terrific quality of life officers, but that's just one link in the chain. I would really hope the mayor would consider a quality of life court like Memphis and um, Charleston, because it's really hard for officers of the, of the court to hear quality of life issues on the same level you know, that they're dealing with other civil issues. And um, I, it's a revenue producer. Um, if these quality, so, you know, we're looking for more revenue. In some instances, they say the quality of life courts are self-supporting with the revenues they collect. So I would really uh, ask you to look toward that. As part of um, zoning and planning for the area, and this is really a citywide initiative, but I would ask that some monies be made available. I don't think they would have to be too much for education of commissioners that sit on BZA, VCC, HDLC, city planning, etc. Because a lot of times those commissioners, um, I believe they're trying to do a good job, but they actually vote against what the standing regulations are. And I think that is a great seconds. disservice to the community. So I'd ask that would be done, and also that NEO would be an advocate for citizen participation. You know, whatever form the citizen participation takes, it has to be a neighborhood advocacy, and neighborhood associations need to be registered and get notices of what's going on in their neighborhood as far as zoning and comment. so forth. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um, Michelle is going to be followed by Emmanuel Lane. Hello. Uh, do on the sidewalks, by the way. I'm representing FQBA, and my question is, what can the city do to help with the graffiti issues, not only enforcing laws for perpetrators, but also educating and helping property owners being affected regularly? Emmanuel will be followed by Dalton Safwa. All right, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Councilwoman. Um, I just had a couple of points. I want to know what are your plans for Armstrong Park about some of the pavement that's um, in Armstrong Park? Are there any thoughts about removing some of the pavement and returning to green space? I um, never seen a park that has so much pavement, and I was wondering, <laughs> I was wondering if there has been any consideration to removing some of the pavement so that the kids that has, that are, that's at Craig School or the other elementary, um, Langyap um, Elementary, that they could come over to the park and they can have some space that they could play in. So if you can give that some consideration, it'd be deeply appreciated. Thank I, you. I didn't do that one, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Dalton Savoy followed by Robert Hanny, Manny, Hammond. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dalton Savoy Jr. I'm interim vice president of the Gentilly Civic Improvement Association, the GCIA. Uh, we feel that the Neighborhood Engagement Office is a city department and not community-based. Uh, we in the neighborhoods 
uh, want to be proactive and make our needs known by the administration, the Neighborhood Engagement Office, answers to the mayor. Are you so, referencing District C? Um, I actually reference in District D. You missed that one, Dalton. I, I know I missed that one, but I figured this would be a good occasion to bring it up again. Anyway, we want, to, we want the mayor to know that we feel that the spending of the $2 million on a citizen participation program, as opposed to the Neighborhood Engagement Office, would coordinate the city's outreach efforts in a more efficient manner and give us a real voice in governing. While the Neighborhood Engagement Office is a step in the right direction, it's not a systemic reform. A citizen participation program is a systemic reform that would be an important and lasting legacy of this administration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Robin Hammond followed by Brian Furness. Go ahead, Robin. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Robert Hammond. I live in the Bywater. I'd just like to encourage the council to, uh, I'd like to thank you first of all for assisting the artists and uh, all the work that we've done for the artists in the Bywater and the Marini. I'd like you to continue to do that and also to find some more meaningful roles for the artists, uh, you know, with the city. I think that maybe the issues of graffiti could help out. I was recently asked to be involved in a uh, show in Mobile, Alabama, where 825 people came to the opening night of a show about the uh, BP oil spill. So this was 17 nationally and locally collected artists. Uh, the director from there said that the show was phenomenal, really gave a lot to uh, think about to the people there. It increased uh, the interest from city and also from uh, industry about uh, how to use art to educate people. Um, I'd also like to uh, ask the mayor and the chief to uh, acknowledge the uh, good work of the 40 plus volunteers, some of who live in this district, of the uh, uh, NOPD Mobile Crisis Unit. We haven't seen you yet. We'd like to hear from you. We'd like to see if there are possibility of expanded roles for the uh, unit who uh, are saving thousands of dollars and tens of, you know, thousands of hours every year for the department. I think that's a good thing for the budget. And uh, also, I'd like to know what a uh, passenger zone is, talking about the parking issue, uh, really smacks of cronyism. I'd like to see those eliminated. Okay, thank you. Oh, and I want free internet. Anybody? <laughs> free internet. Thank you. Uh, Brian Farnes followed by Erlene Bossler, a Bossler, Bossler. Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening, Councilmember Palmer. I'm Brian Furness, and I'm here as president of French Quarter Citizens. Uh, Mr. Mayor, at your April 28th State of the City re review, you said that you would use this coming year to strengthen enforcement and implementation of the laws. Uh, we look for better enforcement of the laws, and you've heard this because it runs through all of the problems we have, almost all of them anyway. For instance, on noise, trash and sanitation, parking, traffic, commercial displays, alcoholic beverage controls, short-term rentals, and special events. Enforcement is needed to protect residents and visitors and key to addressing French Quarter concerns. Uh, secondly, I'd like to echo Michelle Kimball, who asked that you fund fully the Vieux-Curé Commission and the other agencies and commissions that are charged with enforcing and protecting the rules governing land use and other uses as well. I would also hope that you would seize on uh, Sue Klein's recommendation to educate the commissioners and board members on their responsibilities and mandates according to criteria established by law and regulation. And finally, uh, Mr. Mayor, we hear reports that the city is considering designating a hospitality zone, seconds. perhaps linked to the 2013 Super Bowl. Could you uh, take this opportunity to describe what the city might have in mind? Thank you very much. Thank you. Erlene is going to be followed by Aaron Clark Rizzio. Hi, my name is Erlene Boidor. I live in the 1200 block of Bourbon Street. I'm not going to talk about crime because we all know what's going on with crime. What I want to talk about is aesthetics. Without the French Quarter, we're like Kansas or Iowa. I don't think anybody will dispute that. And I would like to quote uh, Councilman Palmer who talks about uh, the 8 million people who come to New Orleans each year. I would venture to say that that's 75% is a reasonable number of the people who come to New Orleans and visit the French Quarter. 
I'd also like to talk about what Ms. Clarkson said about the curb appeal. Anyone who has anything to do with real estate knows that if you want somebody to buy your house, you need to have curb appeal. Well, I want to tell you that what we have in New Orleans French Quarter is not curb appeal. People have talked about the broken sidewalks. I've, what, I've seen it firsthand. I've had to pick up people off the sidewalk who are falling, call EMS to come get them. I myself has fallen because the streets are so bad. And I've had to have somebody pick me up and bring me home. I think part of the problem is that there is complete disregard for the laws that say you cannot park on the sidewalk. I spent $1,200 to put those um, horses in front of my house because I constantly had construction trucks parked on my sidewalk. And I'm not talking about little pickup trucks. I'm talking about 18-wheeler trucks carrying lumber and whatever you can think of. One day, there were five trucks in the, in the 1200 block of, of uh, Bourbon Street. Three for this job at 1228 and two for another job. There's complete disregard for the ordinance we have on the books. There's overweight trucks and cars and trucks speeding down Bourbon. I don't know what the answer is. I, don't, I think the police department's doing a fine job. When I call up the 8th District and ask Officer Jones, who's the quality of life officer, he's right there for me. But we need to stop it before it starts. And again, I don't know the answer. We need help in the French Quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aaron will be followed by a dual presentation from Linda, Marin, or Marlon, and Bill. Thank you so much for taking my comment. Um, I just wanted to make a comment tonight about um, equality in funding within the criminal justice system, and specifically the funding of the Orleans Public Defender's Office. Um, I would just encourage you, Mayor, to include, include the Public Defender's Office in your budget. Um, it's so important to have a fully funded criminal justice system, and I think the only way to do that is to fund all of the actors within the system. And while you can't fund them all equally, perhaps you can add more equity to your funding. I think it's clear that money can't buy you justice, but a lack of funding certainly can create injustice. And so while uh, the goals of the criminal justice system are certainly efficiency and, and justice, I hope you see how the public defender's office and a fully funded public defender's office promotes that efficiency and therefore promotes that justice. So thank you so much for this time. Linda will be followed by Catherine Jolivet. Mayor Landry, thank you very much again for hosting this event. We appreciate it, and it's uh, great to have an opportunity to have a voice. Um, I live in the French Quarter, and I'm uh, also very involved with French Quarter citizens, and my question involves sidewalks. Um, being that the ordinance say that the property owners are responsible for maintaining the sidewalks, yet the city has uh, probably a capacity to oversee the look. Uh, given the importance of the French Quarter as a tourist attraction and also one of the largest contiguous historic districts in the nation, what could be done to uh, uh, improve the sidewalks on a way that is respectful of the history of the area and also um, gives us a unified look? Thank you very much. Thank you. Catherine will be followed by uh, Jacinta Gonzalez. Yeah, but only one person chose to speak, apparently. That was um, Bill was the person that was with her. Hi, good evening. My name is Catherine Jolivet, and uh, I am a resident of the French Quarter. And I just recently acquired uh, Jolie Preventative Healthcare Resource Center at the um, New Orleans Healing Center on the corner of St. Rock and St. Claude. And uh, I want to say a very, very special thank you to Dr. DeSalvo and her team uh, that gave me an opportunity to talk about my vision and mission for preventative health care in New Orleans. And so I'm here tonight. Um, to ask for support from the mayor and the city council people on preventative health care. 
Um, my, my vision and mission for uh, the city of New Orleans and the community here is to provide a prevention and health maintenance program in order for us to fight chronic illnesses and obesity in the city. And of course, I like to refer to it as beauty versus the beast because my mission is to restore the beauty of the body that is destroyed by chronic illnesses and obesity each and every day. And what I'm asking for is support uh, to have a venue uh, that welcomes a friendlier type of environment for families to come to and get the resources they need on preventative health care as we move forward on alternative eating plans and through um, educating, nutritional counseling, and education. 30 seconds. So um, my proposal is that taking this as a uh, funding priority for the community is to have a venue that's large enough to sustain um, preventative health care resources with exercise, uh, gyms for children where they can go, where the whole family could come and learn about exercise, nutritional counseling, and education as a whole. So, and that's what I'm asking for the community support in. Thank you for your comment. Jacinta, I think I'm reading this right followed by Kaylin Wright. Um, good evening, my name is Jacinta Gonzalez and I'm the lead organizer for the Congress of Day Laborers. We're a membership of organization of reconstruction workers and their families that have, many of us have come post Katrina to help in the reconstruction efforts. And what we really want to bring attention to is some issues with both language access and also injustice within the criminal justice system. The first with language access is, you know, we know that the police department has made great efforts to try to have more language access and have more translators on the scene, yet we're seeing that in the experiences of our members, it's still not enough. Delmi, one of our members who had to step out briefly because her child was crying, she was in a domestic dispute and the police officer couldn't understand her so arrested her. She spent 45 days in OPP and once the charges were dropped, the sheriff decided to submit to a hold request. And for those of you who don't know, basically the sheriff is using city money to hold people for immigration to come. And so they're really using city resources to do the federal government's job while the, the sheriff is over budget there are no translators in municipal court. There are no translators in traffic court. And so we really could use those resources differently. So instead of tearing families apart, we could really be making sure that people are included in every type of life in New Orleans and not just in the criminal justice system. I know only one person can speak, but Lorenzo, who's a high school student, just wanted to say a couple of words to you. Hi. Um, my name is Lorenzo Torres. I'm currently at Tantu High School. Uh, well. I have become concerned with the, uh, with the, uh, excuse, excuse me. <laughs> well, with the with the collaboration of the sheriff, with immigration. I mean, I am scared right now. I mean, I have become scared because I don't know if if one day I'll I'll get to my house, and uh, I don't know if my, my family is gonna be there. I don't I don't want that to happen. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Nadia Bynum, followed by Bill Murphy. Good evening. I'm Nadia Bynum, and I'm representing Historic Fall Burg Tremere Association uh, between North Rampart and Claiborne and Basin and St. Bernard. First, I want to give some information. Uh, before that, I'd like to thank our mayor and Christian Gisland Palmer. She is the Iraq in Treme, we appreciate it. And of course, we appreciate Jackie Clarkson from her continued support of our neighborhood and everything else in our city. Uh, in general, I want to share some information. For our first is that um, uh, the street, St. Claude Street, was changed between the 1000 block and the 1800 block to Henri de Lille. And we're just doing our um, effort to make sure that city government knows about that so you can find us. It's just eight blocks that was confusing with St. Claude Avenue. Also, uh, Treme uh, is going to be celebrating 200 years in 2012, the same year that the state is going to be celebrating it. And it's going to be a big thing in the city. Uh, we are, are partnering with the state. Uh, we are getting a lot of support, and we want to know that, let the city government know that, as well as anyone here who have, have any pro programs going on that they, they'd like to connect with our website. 
we invite you to participate. We're going to have probably trombone shorty who's going to be our face. We're going to have a lot of cultural and educational programs. So it's going to be about every other month throughout uh, 2012. So we're planning to have a kickoff in November, and we'll let everyone know. So I just want to let you know, come on out and celebrate with us. Also, uh, Treme is trying to move our area up. We have been, I call the stepchild of the city, being right next door to the French quarters. A lot of folks have said, don't go to Treme. But uh, the hard work of the community, the people have really done a lot to bring it up. And we're trying to bring economic development there. The last thing is I like to ask that as Treme has gotten on the map from the HBO series, more tourists are coming to our neighborhood. But we do not need the big trucks and big buses over there. And we need to make sure that the tourists are respecting our community. At one point, they wouldn't come. Now they're coming. So we just need to make sure that they understand it. <laughs> and we need parking. Parking overflow is the issue. When the French Quarter is locked down, guess where they're parking? So we have we to address that. We need to bring your comments to a close. OK. And uh, basically, uh, yeah, I guess that's mostly it. If we can make sure that we have parking addressed in Treme and make sure we get the respect we deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Murphy, and I think I skipped over Kale and Wright. Hey, um, the, the only improvement to the St. Rock market that's been done in the last years when a movie company made it into a Pan Panamanian drug market. I mean, well, it's kind of funny, but if you were Larry Funches, who lives across the street, and you were called into the, the blight hearing, that, you know, it gets pretty serious. I mean, you know, the roof is peeling off. It's not being maintained. And that's, you know, this sounds a lot like Larry Watermeyer, but then you go down St. Claude by the Stalling Center, you go around the corner, and the old streetcar barn hasn't had a paint job in 30 years. But then back over in St. Claude, we've got drug houses that the police have been to, found stolen merchandise in, but they don't seem to talk to the blight people because nothing happens to those. <clears throat> so it really seems to me there's a systematic problem in applying blight laws, rules in, in the city that uh, it, it sounds like there, there needs to be revamping. Other, pe other cities have um, vacant homeowners register their houses, um, you know, have the police report directly to the city when there's a crime seen at a blighted house so they can actually take care of it, but there just doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to, you know, all these blight hearings we're having. Thank you. Yeah, I skipped over Kaelin Wright. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, the sheriff's tax sales seem to be a great way of dealing with the abandoned properties. We applaud you for getting that going. In historic areas of District C, selling them is far preferable to tearing them down. Can we get a guarantee from you tonight that your administration will not demolish any properties, assuming there are no structural safety issues, until they've had the chance to be purchased at the sheriff's sales? Secondly, here in the French Quarter, one of our biggest threats to the residential base is the proliferation of illegal short-term rentals. What actions will your administration take to stem the tide and enforce the laws on the books? This is a potential revenue stream for our cash-strapped city. These operations don't pay the hotel motel taxes, and they undercut legitimate hotels and bed and breakfasts. And finally, we have a problem in the French Quarter where several street lights have been mowed over by oversized vehicles or vehicles that have been hitting these lights when they make corners. And some of these lights have actually been missing in action for up to three years' time since after Hurricane Gustav when some of the first lighting surveys were conducted. Can we get a commitment from you and your administration to replace the approximately dozen street lights that are currently missing because seconds. they've been taken out. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you. It's 730. Um, how many cards do we have left? We have four. Actually, we have here not to be a district. We have four cards left. So here's the, here's the drill. Um, if you want me to take those publicly, we can stay and do that, and then I'll answer all of them. Or if you want to 
have me start answering the questions now. I'll do that, and the four who haven't had a chance to speak can come up after. So with a show of hands, that's, that means eight minutes, um, and then eight more, so the 16. Um, what do you want to do? Everett, let's have a show of hands. If you want to uh, hear the other four, uh, raise your hands. You want to give the other four a chance. If you want to write for me to move on, raise your hands. All right, that's, that's even. So we're going to hear the other four. <laughs> Uh, Melvin, it's 15, we win, but it's four, so let's just be patient. If y'all can cut it down a little bit, that'd be good. Thanks. Uh, Melvin Rodriguez, followed by Shirley Farrier. Thank you for uh, hearing my comments this evening and being one of the famous four. Uh, I'm here uh, as a, a business uh, person in the French Quarter in the 200 block of Bourbon Street uh, and uh, in the hospitality industry. The hospitality industry uh, last year had 8.1 million visitors come to the city, and it is uh, probably the largest source of income from, uh, for the city. The question got asked earlier, uh, how many of the visitors visit the French Quarter? A study that was commissioned last year said that better than 95% visit the French Quarter. So I'm here as a proponent uh, for making the infrastructure of the French Quarter better uh, and more regular. My question is, is there any consideration that's been given to a dedicated recurring revenue source for the French Quarter? And can we get a commitment from you uh, that that recurring revenue will be designated to the French Quarter to protect it as maybe the city's most important asset? 30 seconds. Lastly, uh, I'd like to know why it's so difficult for enforcement of the ordinances. Um, sidewalks, we know, are the responsibility of the property owner. Uh, to take it a step further, it actually says 18 inches into the street, which is essentially the gutter. And uh, if we were taking care of that as property owners, maybe the smell wouldn't be quite as bad. Uh, and the sanitation issues and why they're not being followed uh, so we can have a, a cleaner French Quarter. We went through a great spell uh, in the last few years, and in the last six months, it's gone down very badly. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Shirley Collier, followed by Reverend Tony. Yeah, thank you for uh, letting me um, ask this question because I have been asked this question by so many. And I'm sorry I have a cold, uh, you all, so you have to excuse me. But many people uh, are concerned or would like to know the status of the Circle Food Store. So maybe you can give some feedback on that particular uh, issue. And I'm finished. All right. <laughs> Reverend Tony, followed by Ms. Hawkins. Uh, Thank you for having me and thank you for the last four of us. First of all, I'd like to thank NOPD for a wonderful job on the 300 block of French Quarter Wedding Chapel area because we cleaned up a lot of glass uh, from broken windshields uh, before things got real well. Second thing, I would like to find out about meeting with the mayor's, uh, mayor and his office and staff on um, a project that is underway. And it is my pleasure to announce that I have a backer for a project I've been working on for a long time. We're going to see the first ever international wedding museum take place here in the French Quarter. And I met with a backer today, and the project is underway. And uh, it's be very good for revenue for the French Quarter and the rest of the city. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And Ms. Hawkins, and can you make it a District C-related question, Ms. Hawkins? Yes, my name is Gwendolyn Hawkins. I'm the coordinator of Gentilly Heights Vascoville Neighborhood Watch. Thank you, Ms. Palmer and Mayor Landrew. I am supportive of the Citizen Participation Program. Please try to fund that for us. Thank you so very much. Thank you, and with that, that would be the last question, Mr. Mayor.